Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. If we do not blatantly call it like it is, we would be stumbling into a storm without a compass. The COVID-19 situation has exposed many deficiencies in the running of the world. Some nations have fared far less favorably than others, and Nigeria has been exposed for what she is, an underdeveloped 60-year-old nation. The federal government has turned beggar. Banks are sending out text messages soliciting mere citizens to pay a donation into accounts which they inform us of regarding the saving COVID-19. No finesse at all. Banks, large corporations, and wealthy individuals who have government patronage as a common denominator appear eager to make billion Naira donations in return for more patronage, perhaps. Had we spent the last 60 years building schools and hospitals, we would not be in this position. Our people ignorantly disobey guidelines laid, for, laid out for our lockdown and curfew, while certain states deny deaths are from COVID-19, yet the numbers are alarming. So we cannot even believe the figures that we have been told by NCDC. Luckily, though, the virus appears not to have taken root here. We have created isolation centers containing beds, but not enough ventilators or other equipment. Most of these appear to have come through private donations. What has been the financial input of federal government? The distribution of comforting food and money is heavily skewed to the north, an area that has done little in 60 years to raise standards of living and education. This major lapse is a national embarrassment. So when do we start to correct this? I believe that these, sig that these signal an end to business as usual. All proceeds are down, pay conditions for elected officers disgracefully high. The mere site of the BMW limousine of the governor of Akwaibom begs the question, is he not a public star? As a nation, we now need to focus on developing new systems of production and manufacturing, raise budgets for education and health, which today are less than that for just national assembly pay. We need to restructure government, whittle down the powers of, pre of president, Prime Minister, reduced to one national parliament, strip governors of their powers, in effect, a new constitution. Um, Chuka, thank you for that. Um, I, I, I just made a couple of notes. I, I don't necessarily want to start with the, okay. the things that I, I want to query, but let me start with them since I made okay. a note of them. Um, the fact that you said the uh, distribution of palliatives are heavily skewed to the north, I didn't find any evidence to defend that. So I don't know where you got that from. And then also the BMW, the Akwai Bomb governor, much as we want to point the finger at them, I still couldn't find evidence of that either. So maybe someone can help me with that. Then, but the point I actually want to make is to do with, you know, you said the, the last 60 years. I can, I can send you some of those. Uh, okay, uh, hold on to that. Just, uh, Let me just quickly yeah. say, the, 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 last, the, the, the last 60 the, years, we the, didn't, the, I, I'm making, yeah. I'm dropping that so someone can correct me. Um, uh, the last 60 years, we didn't do anything. And so my own focus is, what do we do? Let's plan for the next 60. Because I'm done with complaining without a, a roadmap to correct the things that we're complaining about. I know there must be um, NGOs that are doing something specifically about schools and hospitals. It's about time we collaborated to join with those people who are already, I, I, I believe there's some well-meaning individuals who are already campaigning for improvement of schools and hospitals. How do we unite and get behind those people so we form a collective voice rather than each of us individually complaining about things 
that we may not be an expert of. Whereas there are people who've done research into this area, they're campaigning a bit like what Treasure is doing for sanitary tiles, and they've already collated figures and facts and numbers that can help push their campaign. How do we get on the back of those people to see that we actually make progress in the next 60 years? That's my, that's my point. Yeah, um, first and foremost for me, uh, Chuka talked about uh, ventilators, um, that there are no, there are beds but no ventilators. <laughs> <laughs> For me, you know, in my advocacy, I said this is looking more like a, a scandemic than a pandemic mm -hmm. because you find out that most of the isolation centers, most of the, the videos we see of the isolation centers is either you see people singing and dancing or some people even eating, you know, heavy meal and, um, you know, some just walking around and so i've never really seen anywhere any of these uh, patients is on a, a ventilator okay. so maybe the cases we have are don't the ones that you don't require ventilators mm. uh, that's on one side and then secondly um you also said that the situation is getting worse mm. economic situation is getting worse and then now is the time for us to start to do those things we didn't do in 60 years I can tell you that <laughs> the government is going to use the excuse of the fact that um, uh, the oil prices are dwindling, not to do anything at yes. all. And because we also, as a people, we do not believe in the truth, we'll complain about it, we we'll not want to hold anybody accountable. we we'll create excuses for them. Like some people will say, oh no, because you hate Buari, that is why you're saying this. But actually, what Chuka is saying is, there's a new order, and the earlier we align to that new order to begin to build, what all these makeshift hospitals that we are building, mm -hmm. what becomes of them after COVID-19? Are we going to collapse I know, them? I know for a fact are we going to create new structures mm -hmm. that we house these beds, mm -hmm. or we're going to just market them to private hospitals? Let me just you, say, you know, very quickly, so, um, Libra, these are some I know of the for challenges. A fact, I know for a fact that they're giving out loans now to hospitals to help develop infrastructure. But it's private hospitals, again, and whoever can access. These are low-interest loans. But these Same are things thing. that if we galvanized, if we got behind the whole issue of uh, our health sector, if we came as one, we could drive change because they, they are conscious that they need to be doing something. They're conscious, even if they want to make excuses. What are we doing as a collective to force that change in the direction we want it to go? Bolano, you, know, you were saying something, sorry. You know, I, I think, and we know that the political class has failed us in this country. They have failed woefully. Um, what I want to draw attention is, is what the phenomenon at the onset of the lockdown, how banks and corporate organizations are just donating huge amounts of money. And I wondered, but if you had this sort of money all this while, why didn't you just, you know, donate a hospital? You know, donate. No, but after donating, and then the next thing decides hacking stuff. <laughs> there you go. Healthcare is the system. It's actually a fairly complex system. And that is why all these haphazard approach to its development. They don't work. Will not work. Uh, we get to this position, we start putting some uh, makeshift arrangements in some, uh, football pitches and all the rest. Uh, after this time, what happens, those things are temporary. We have to dismantle them and, and resume football in those pitches. That is not how to do this. Like I said the other time, we were talking about uh, unity of purpose. We need a vision. So even for the healthcare, center, uh, healthcare system, there must be a vision, mm -hmm. and we can collectively, both private and public sector, once we get on the same page, we know exactly where we're going, where do we want to be in four years, in five years, in ten years, and we have the master plan drawn up, we all plug into it, and we can arrive at that destination. Yeah. But the problem we have, or we have always had, is that there is no unity of people. Their, their vision does not exist. So everybody go on their own path, the, and the, whatever the, happens, the vision. So moving forward. What yes, do we moving need forward. The vision is it. this. Last time, Bolahan made excuse for the president. Oh, really? And when, yes, he did. He did. What was the excuse? That when the president came on board, the clinic in, in Asso Rock wasn't good enough, so he had to travel abroad. Was that? Yes, that was. <laughs> what he, did he really? That's that's what he said. And I so said, with such I excuse. So I said it from the point of view of the fact that that situation should have spawned him into a vicious but situation. He shouldn't but have even... He he shouldn't, he shouldn't have even traveled. Traveled. He shouldn't have, my, my disagreement with you is that he shouldn't have traveled at all. At all. He should have fixed that's it. That's when you come on board. 
We have fundamental yeah. objectives and directive principles of state policy. Right. We have economic policy, we have social policy, we have political policy, we have health policies, and all of these form the vision of the country. The problem we have is, well, like I explained, when the president came on board, rather than realize that he has sworn to an oath, we started making excuses for him. Oh, you see what he met on ground. And then, the moment he realized that we we're making excuses for him, he also started making excuses. I didn't know it was this bad. You know, but yet, when you were campaigning, you insisted that you were coming to fix the bad situation. And then you came, you said you didn't know it was this bad. And we said, yes, oh, this is 10 years yes, of so PDP. So bad. So moving forward, Moving what do you forward do? is all of us, all of us, irrespective of the party, we must realize that once after the election, once you are sworn in, the time for campaign and complain is over. What we have now is a time for work. You are no longer the president or the governor of the party that voted you, but the president, the president or the governor for everybody. Mm. And there are provisions in the law that says what you should do. And the moment you fail to do it, we should unanimously say, this is not the truth. Yeah, so, but so for example, so do once you do that, no, let me quickly, let me sorry, take, please, eh? I have handled the election petition. I know how politicians, how scared they are when their mandate is threatened. But we don't know. But the moment they know that we are united and we are insisting on that thing, they will do it. Okay, so for example, let me take it from there. Let's look at a specific area. Let's look at the ins health insurance because that one will benefit everybody. Yeah. That's an area that is within grasp. We need to work on that. We need to push for that as a collective. I'm, I'm sure there's some NGOs already pushing for that. It's a matter of just make it a priority. You both virtual uh, social media and physical campaigning. We need to say everybody needs this country. We need national health insurance. But you know the role of the media is to amplify these things. Yes. yes. So yes, the when, when it comes back to us. Yeah, but we amplify. Yes. We, we we prioritize yeah. and then make one an agenda so we and then become, we pursue it. Let's to, start discussing you know? national health insurance. Exactly. Although it sometimes feels like we're perpet facing perpetual stormy weather, if we face the right direction, we will eventually navigate our way out of it. Of that, I'm certain. After the break, I'm certainly committed to an about front as far as my advocacy is concerned. A gift or a poison chalice. It's high time we ha were brave enough to identify which is which. I'm going to be talking about Uzodima's gifts of 20 SUVs to the judges in Imo State. I'm advocating for a zero, zero tolerance to the cancer of bribery. I wonder why a cancer sufferer would play Russian roulette with a poisonous substance that once caused them to live as though every day was their last. Why do we trifle with bribery and openly parade it as if it were a harmless evil we can't do without? When I read news of a state governor gifting SUVs to judges, it is as if I'm watching a leukemia sufferer drag on cigarettes. Now, the argument has been made that the cars were most likely not registered in the personal names of the judges, but as official cars. So they wouldn't strictly qualify as a bribe. But why even flirt with the appearance of one, I ask? I'm told by a legal practitioner friend of mine that he is witness to the yearly practice of judges in a particular state in Nigeria lining up to receive Christmas gifts from the governor. How magnanimous of this state official. On whose tab, I wonder? Is it not state funds that foot the bill of these gifts? These gifts to the average onlooker would seem to be a poison chalice, which at the very least leaves a sour taste in the mouth. Now, let's talk about separation of powers. Separation of powers is sounded yet another death knell as far as I'm concerned. What kind of confidence does this inspire in the average citizen that the judges will act in an independent manner? Whereas the normal thing, would, would it not rather be that the judiciary articulate its fiscal needs, both capital and recurrent, for appropriation by the legislature or some other independent body? Why must other arms of government take turns in surrendering their autonomy to an already overpowerful executive? My gripe is that it has so become an open and normalized practice that we even justify it. Make no mistake, a culture of bribery will never be normal, no matter how frequently practiced. I remember my surprise during a legal attachment, a mini pupillage, when on an errand to log a case at the magistrate's court here in Lagos, I was told that I needed to tender a mobilization fee for my case to have any hopes of being listed. 
my more experienced colleague nudged me at this point and plainly stated that mobilization fee was a bribe and that provision for this had already been made by the firm. My mouth hung open. I don't bribe and have suffered dearly for it, which I will always take stoically. It's time we took a zero tolerance stance to bribery. We all must be like the cancer su survivor that will not touch the offending substance with a long pole, no matter how pressured we are. They may as well be asking us to drink poison. Ultimately, it's a matter of life and death and of the survival of our nation. I rest my case. <laughs> you know, I have a lot to say here, but uh, no, I don't want to hung, uh, yeah. hang, hang, hug the camera. Check. No, say a bit and then we we'll come for around. You, know, you know, in Nigeria, once you, once it's not beneficial to you, it is corruption. But once you benefit from it, it is connection. Okay, mm. there's another word for it. Yes. <laughs> and if you remember, David Blunkett, you were in England then when David Blunkett was um, asked was. to resign. <laughs> Um, I know you were in England you then, <laughs> asked to resign <laughs> for gifting a train ticket meant for MPs' wives to a girlfriend. He was heard to be abused of office. But here the question would have been, an MP, you can't even use your connection to gift train tickets mm. to your girlfriend. It's seen as a perk of the job. Exactly. It's, it's the second perk, one, yeah. the second time in office, but enough, he also if, was if asked people to... people turn the blind eye, it would be considered a perk anywhere. Yeah. It's it just, is a perk. Yes. The only difference yeah. is that so they, they make noise about it. The next it. time was the same David Blunkett was asked to resign for using his office to facilitate the issuance of a visa to his girlfriend's nanny. <laughs> he has a thing with that. Exactly. You have been so, tried the And world so over. for here... Yeah, how can you be in office and not help your brother get visa? Mm. You know, I, I try to differentiate between connection and corruption. Mm. We are all involved. And, and so, this thing that, um, you know, we talked about it before. Yes, we did. It's become so normal in almost every state that when governors don't buy jeeps for judges, it's as if, oh, these judges don't even have tools to work with. Mm. And I completely agree with you. Let the judiciary appropriate what they need, including these cars that are supposed to be part of the terms and condition of service, service for them. Yeah. For them, so that the moment, just like a commissioner, the moment you are sworn in, you're given your official car. Mm -hmm. So this idea of gifting rice, gifting cows to judges also is corruption. Mm -hmm. It is. A situation where... Justice Kasina Alu's wife died. I'm calling his name. Okay. A former chief justice of the federation. And the banks, senior advocates, and everybody were falling over themselves to gift, to gift cows in his village in Kasina Alu. And then, in some cases, the cows, you, you, if it is a liberal social chambers, you write your name on the body of the <laughs> oh cow. Oh, my so goodness. So that they will know that you were the one. We that haven't seen anything and yet. This, and we say it, oh, because you, the judge lost his wife. Oh. Some people watching us at home now will say, no, 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 that is not part of no, it. But it is all part of this. The, the, the You're problem. compromising the judge's You're compromising. autonomy. So there should be independence, mm. from, both from without and within. How are they even appointed mm. in the first place? Okay. As we like speak now, yeah, as we speak now, there is a petition by some concerned senior lawyers mm. on the appointment of judges at the FCT. And what did the uh, 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 Supreme Court say? That you are all rabble rouser. Because you have You're names of, of wives, names of uh, daughters, sons, and those who are close to people who are judges and senior advocates. The bearer is from me. So when you have already <laughs> a system that is squid, how do you now expect that such system will be above board? Wow. And that's why we are where we are today. Wow. Even though I have been won, in court, open court, a judge asked me to stand up at the Court of Appeal. Ah, yes, you were talking about uh, judges and even calling names. I said, yes, because we were discussing judiciary. And being the only job I do, I wouldn't sit back and allow these things happen without calling out. Oh, you know, right. it, it took Femi Falana to apologize on, on my behalf ass. that day. Before I, 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 you only backed down. Would have, Please, before Chuka, Chuka, the judge come backed in. down. Chuka, why, come in. Why should you even, why should you even have apologized? Anyway? No, Femi Falana no. was apologizing for him. He didn't. Yeah. Why did, yeah, why did Farlan uh, apologize in the first place? Yes, this is the problem. Mm. Judges, judges ah. are in, have inflated egos, inflated personalities, and yet a whole lot of them are corrupt. But we're the ones um, allowing them to so, have those egos. Is it not you that well, will give them a cow? 
We're the ones, uh, we're the ones giving them that sense of entitlement. You give them cows, give them... It, is, a, it, it needs but, to change. But permit me, it there really are some very fantastic... No, I'm sure there are, but you can very go on. fantastic. Uh, yeah, what I was saying was that it really needs to change. So we've been talking about unity of purpose. You know, Bolan has talked about, you know, unity of purpose. We don't have any unity because we're just corrupt and undemocratic. Yeah. We have no risk. I just feel that the corruption where the judges are concerned is like leaving the, your house door open for me because they're right. the only ones who could have kept us protected what we're looking out for. But yeah. if, if, yeah. The, if yeah. they're, if they're yeah. compromised, then where do we go from there? But, it, but what the is saying it's about so the fact bad. that they're good judges, how do we strengthen it the hand of so those good judges? It is so bad these days that some cases, some litigants will come to I you think, I think, and tell you, uh, uh, okay, I mean, this is the money for the case. Uh, don't you think we should keep money aside to bribe the judge? Oh it is my. that bad. Oh, wow. Please, uh, Bolaho, this is revolution. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I think part of what we also need to do oh. is to make the judges more independent financially. Ah. Yeah, exactly. If we have to uh. pass the funding of the judges through the executive, there's a little problem right there. It's, it's, it's not a little one. To become, yes. They are helpless. Yeah. So the, the guy who, 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 who pays the piper, who pays the piper, who call the tune. So he, he knows that they need him. The, the governor, for example, knows that they need him. Yeah. And 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 the funding is through him. Yeah. It can do and undo. Yeah. So we need a situation in which the funding of the judiciary is also independent, a direct line. Well, you know, I was going to even bring I, I, up the case that I have a, an issue with the executive holding um, the, the purse strings yes. anyway, because I hear that the same thing goes for even those who are running the police service. There's a lot of executive control over, um, so we, maybe we'll address that in another time because our time is up. Well, um, we're already at the end of the road, um, and yet there's so much more to thrash out, as you can see. I just want to say thank you to Chuka, and also thank you to Bolaho for joining us uh, virtually on this edition. It's been, it's been a pleasure as always. Chuka. Bolaho. Thank you. We throw away salute. <laughs> Can't wait to have you back in the studio. <laughs> okay. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next time, when we'll be kicking off refreshed for the task ahead, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye bye. <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking, it's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.